Hi guys, welcome back to Spelling and Word Study. My name is Mrs. Rhodes and I'm here to get you started on Unit 34, words that end with T-I-O-N, S-I-O-N, or S-H-I-O-N. Please take a second to gather your materials. You will need your blue book open to page 209. You'll also need some colorful pens, markers, or crayons. Remember, whatever I mark on my board, you should be marking on your page. Please save room for a key as well. You'll notice that I've already gone ahead and broken my words into syllables using these pink vertical lines, and I've also added a check mark to the stressed syllable in each word. So this week I have a new derivational suffix to teach you about. Remember, a derivational su uh, suffix changes the part of speech. So you will notice that many of our words this week started out as verbs. We can change them to a noun by adding the suffix I-O-N. So, for example, let's look at the word protect. That's a verb, right? We protect things that are important to us. I can take protect and turn it into a noun by adding the I-O-N suffix. All of our words this week end with that I-O-N suffix and are therefore nouns. Some of them started out as verbs, words like donate or locate, and some of them started out as a Latin root, like vis or verse. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Let's start by reading our list. Please repeat after me, and as you do, use your ears to listen for that shun sound at the end of the word, and use your eyes to notice whether that shun sound is being spelled with a T-I-O-N, S-I-O-N, or S-H-I-O-N. Please repeat after me. Cushion donation, equation, fashion, location, mansion, mission, passion, pension, session, tension, vacation, version, vibration, vision. All right, please choose a color. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find all the words that end with T-I-O-N. Now remember what I said, the suffix is I-O-N. That is a derivational suffix that signifies a noun. It can change a verb to a noun or it can take a Latin root and turn it into a noun. So here in donation, there's our T-I-O-N, but I want you to notice that this word started out as donate, right? Now, when we change donate to donation, we have to drop that E. Why do we drop the E? Because we remember our suffix rule. Our suffix rule says that any time a verb ends with silent E, we have to drop that E before we add our vowel suffix. I-O-N starts with a vowel. So donate becomes donation. Equate becomes equation. When you equate two things, you set them equal, right? you make an equation. So there's our T-I-O-N ending, and there's our I-O-N suffix. All we did was drop the E and add I-O-N. Same thing happens here. What's the verb hiding in location? Yeah, locate, right? When you locate something on a map, you find its location, you figure out where it is. So there's our T-I-O-N ending, there's our I-O-N suffix. We wrote locate, we dropped our E, 
we added ION. So we have donate, equate, location. These are all nouns, right? So to, a donation is something you give. An equation is like a math problem. You set things equal. A location is a place. An address um, would be your, would tell people your location. Um, so I'm just going to write that. A location is an address. An equation is um, setting two things equal. And a donation is something you give away. charity like you might donate something to the goodwill or to the salvation army anything you give them is your donation okay uh, right here vacation that's also a noun and the verb form is vacate when you vacate the premises you leave right so if you're moving to a new apartment you first have to vacate your old apartment right Think about vacation. We know that vacation is a break from school or a break from work. Sometimes we travel for our vacation, but whether we're staying at home or we're going away, we are leaving our cares behind. We are forgetting about our job and our worries for a little bit. So when you vacate something, you could say that you're going on vacation, right? I, I feel like this is an example where vacate and vacation don't exactly fit, but I think you know what we're talking about here. And then the last one is vibration. Again, a noun. Our verb is vibrate. Think of sound waves, right? They bounce up and down. Those are called vibrations. So here's our T-I-O-N ending. There's our I-O-N suffix. So over here, green box equals T-I-O-N. And we use that particular spelling when we're taking a verb and we're changing it to a noun. All of the verbs on our list started with a, um, ended with a silent E. Donate, equate, locate, vacate, and vibrate. So we had to drop the E before we added I-O-N. But if we have a word that ends with two consonants, like protect, detect, correct, all we have to do is add our I-O-N suffix, and we can change that verb to a noun. You're going to have more practice with this when you get to page 200. And 12. You're going to have a whole bunch of words. Donate, locate, vibrate. You're going to drop the silent E, add I-O-N, and turn them into nouns. Over here, you're going to have a bunch of verbs like this that already end with two consonants. So all you're going to do is add I-O-N to instruct, inject, infect, reflect. Then you'll use this as your word bank to match the words with their definitions below. Okay, so that's the T-I-O-N suffix. But you'll notice that many of our words this week end with S-I-O-N as well. Now here's what's interesting. If we look at a word like, let's start with, with this, vision, we're still adding our I-O-N suffix. Let me erase that. We're still adding our I-O-N suffix but instead of adding it to a verb, we're adding it to a Latin root. So vis has something to do with seeing. Think of visual, visualize, okay? Uh, so vision is a noun, and it has to do with eyesight, right? You go to the doctor, the eye doctor, to check your vision. Okay, so... We're still adding our I-O-N suffix, but this time our um, we're starting with a Latin uh, root instead of a whole word. 
We see that again in mansion. There's our S-I-O-N junk. There's our I-O-N suffix. This is also a noun. A mansion is a big house. Rich people sometimes live in a mansion. Mission. There's another Latin root. Anytime you see a word that has M-I-S or M-I-T, it has something to do with sending. So when you send someone on a mission, you're sending them off to do something, right? Again, we're ending with S-I-O-N, but I-O-N is our suffix. Now, mission has two S's, and they work together to make a sh sound. Vision has one S, and it makes more of a zh sound. So notice that. Mission, vision. Okay, passion. There's our Latin root again. Words that have pass or path have something to do with feeling. Think of compassion or impassion, right? So there's our S-I-O-N ending. There's our I-O-N um, suffix. This is another noun. Passion means strong feelings. Some people are passionate about their job. Some people are passionate about the environment. It means they really care a lot. A mission is, um, a mission could be like, uh, uh, like a journey or an important task. Think about missionaries. They are people that are sent out into other parts of the world. Um, to take care of people. Maybe they help them find clean water, they provide health care, they also um, are on a mission to spread their religion, so they often uh, teach about their God at the same time. Okay, so we have mansion, mission, passion, pension. P-E-N-S has something to do with weighing um, or hanging. Um, and somehow that got tied in with this word. A pension is a thing. It's money that you get after you retire. So your parents are working right now, but they are saving money for when they get older, right? Because they will come to a point where they're too old or unhealthy or tired to work anymore, but they're still gonna need money. So they will start to collect their pension. That is money that they've been saving all along. Session, again, we're starting with the Latin root. Anytime you see S-E-S, -E it has something to do with sitting. So during a session, you sit and get information. There's our S-I-O-N chunk. There's our I-O-N suffix. A session would be like a meeting. Okay. Tension is another noun. When you see words that start with T-E-N-S, they usually have something to do with stretching. So if you think about um, tension, uh, stress, right, causes headaches. Uh, sometimes it does feel like something's pulling apart or stretching your brain. So tension can be stress. Version, another noun. Whenever you see that Latin root verse, it has something to do with turning. Um, so when you talk about your version of a story, um, that's like how you turn the events in your head. Uh, so, of, um, but if we think about like um, Cinderella, a story that's been around for thousands of years, there are many different versions. So a version is just one person's telling, okay? Telling of a fairy tale, telling of a fable, or even um, your version of what happened when, you know, mom came home and said, why is the kitchen a mess? You have one version of what happened, and then your brother might turn it around and have his own version. Okay, 
So anything I just put in a blue box ends with S-I-O-N, and that is a root that's being turned into a noun. Make sense? Notice T-I-O-N and S-I-O-N have the same exact pronunciation. They both say shun. And then just to make things a little more confusing, we have some words, actually only two words this week, that end with S-H-I-O-N. We have fashion, which is a noun. A fashion is a style, right? Each person has their own style of dressing. They like certain fashions. Maybe they like to wear dark colors. Maybe they like to wear bright colors. Um, some people don't care about fashion at all. And then cushion is also a noun. And if you think about a cushion, think about like a soft seat, like a pillow, right? You sit on a cushion. Um, your couch or your living room chair is cushioned. So over here, S-H-I-O-N. Same exact pronunciation as T-I-O-N and S-I-O-N, and that signifies a noun. And maybe fash and kush started as roots. I'm not really sure about that. Um, anyway, here are the important takeaways this week. All of our words end with the I-O-N suffix. That I-O-N suffix, suffix signifies a noun. There are three different ways to spell shun. We can use T-I-O-N, S-I-O-N, S-H-I-O-N. S-H-I-O-N is really just going to come down to these two words, cushion and fashion. So just memorize those. If you're deciding between a T or an S, remember that verbs that end with a T sound are going to take T-I-O-N. And roots that end with a S sound are going to take S-I-O-N. I hope that's helpful. All right, good luck, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.